मैं उसको ऑन करना है तो अभी इमेज डाल एंड म्यूजिक डाल
My fellow colleagues, dear students. On behalf of Future Plus Plus team, I, Koshinjit Basu, Ishani Das, cordially welcome you to our third initiative, a two-day seminar on journey of IT profession and new opportunities. In today's event, we will listen a talk from Ms. Pooja Gangawatai, Head, Corporate Communication and Relation, followed by a panel discussion with our fourth year student, coordinated by Professor Tapos Rai, HODCS. Tomorrow, in second day of our seminar, in the first session, a talk will be given by Sharojit Bhattacharya, Senior Solution Architect, Mindtree, about data engineering and big data. The next session is conducted by Ms. Rahul Singh, Mr. Rahul Singh, a BCA alumnus, 2015-2018 batch, about career opportunities. And in the concluding session, Dr. Orijit Mukherjee, senior scientist, TCS Research, will deliver his talk about pneumomorphic computing. Today's theme of the event is IT is your career. Now, I am requesting our respected executive director, sir, Dr. Alok Kumar Ghosh, to come up to the dais and requesting Mrs. Kumkum Chakraborty from IT department to felicitate him by presenting a bouquet. students actually this 
computer science department, computer application department, IT departments, and all other engineering departments. We have newly started this year Future Plus Plus program, uh, where there are a couple of program in different topics, but today's topic is your career opportunities in IT. Where our Puja Madam, she will tell you where are the places our students are working or getting chance to work. Uh, so people will say so many things, but actually uh, since you are the first year and second year students here, I think, uh, you are knowing the story particularly about the placement of our college, uh, I will say. Because when you have come to this college, definitely will you, everybody want that you must be going out of this college with a laughing face. That means some uh, appointment letter you must have before bidding goodbye to this institute. We everybody want uh, this, and uh, you might. Uh, know or you can find out from our placement uh, details uh, actually if you look for past three four years uh, you can find out particularly in IT industries there are the enormous opportunities and uh, I can uh, say this year placement uh, that means 2021 bad or uh, 2022 bad the placement is remarkably high so definitely, though uh, our placement department or uh, department professors, staff, they have given the time, uh, they have uh, given them enough guidance how to crack, uh, but still, ultimately, it is you who has, uh, that means your seniors, uh, actually they have done their best. See, as a teacher or placement department or department side, uh, we can train you. We can take you, uh, hold your hand and you can take to the uh, running track. But to win the medal, you have to run. So, uh, I wish the efforts taken by all professors and staff for our future plus plus program. Uh, we, I wish all the best and to all my beloved students, I wish all very best and definitely at your future career prospects. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing his valuable thoughts. We'll start today's event with Ms. Puja Gangavartai, Head, Corporate Communication and Relation FIM FIC. She will enlighten us about the IT department's previous and present placement scenario. We welcome Ms. Puja Gangavartai on stage, Madam Chief. I am requesting Joyita Chakravarti to felicitate her by presenting a bouquet. Thank you. Ms. Puja Roy Gangavarthar, a woman of perfect blend of academia and corporate expertise. She had worked with most renowned organizations like Loreto House, ILFS Education and Technology, Villa Institute of Futuristic, Tata AIG, and many more over the last two decades. Being an excellent communicator and exceptional leader, she is now holding the position as a head of corporate communication and relations in our institute. Now I am requesting Puja Madam to say a few words. Yes, ma'am.
So while this little stage is getting prepared, uh, hi everybody, those who don't know me, of course my faculty, my HODs, my senior, my reporty, Dr. Ghosh, everybody knows me, but some of the first years may not know me and we have not interacted. It's good that this opportunity for Future Plus Plus, we are going to interact with each other. It will be a brief interaction, but I can tell you that this is where the future for the next three years is going to go. Now that's most important because IT being a very important field, we need to understand how we are going to prepare ourselves. Now remember, till class 12, uh, the government of India would have given you the declaration that you are an educated person. But the next four years of your life that you're going to spend in future will give you the degree to move into your career. And the difference between being educated and qualified is very different. The difference between skilled, knowledge, and talented are all three different areas. So today my focus is going to be very specific and I'm going to be actually enhancing the area that we are talking about. Allow me to take the stage on behalf of everybody, my entire team of Future Plus Plus and thank you once again for inviting me to do this speak. I love doing this all the time. Next slide please. So I'm going to highlight a few very, very important anecdotes that has been shared over since last 2016. Now mind them, I'll read it out for some of you because I don't know whether you can see it from the back. My students at the back, can you see it? Great. So 22, 9% Indians will be, by 2022, 9% of Indians will be in new jobs that do not exist today yet. Now how frightening does that be? You are preparing your academics and yet you are not sure what kind of jobs will be posing after four years in your life. Now let's take you back a little, little bit later you know, in your life, in your class 10. Did you imagine that something called artificial intelligence would take up the world? Yes or no? Did you think that today the mobile phones which were just used for communication would become also a gadget to calculate the heart rate? Would your watches become smart watches? We didn't expect all this, correct? But we have transferred, we have moved, we have moved into the future and a very short time frame. So that's what we are talking about today also. This statement was made in 2017 and today we are standing in 22 and the change has happened. Next, changing landscape of campus placement. Companies today are actually not going to only focused campuses. They are going to campuses which are in remote areas. And how are they doing it? Artificial intelligence. They are not sitting in their offices or they are not coming to a particular college. Gone are those days, you know, where you were treasured being the college that only this company will come. Today, companies are looking for talent. They are looking for smart people, people who can work in the future. Future of campus recruitment is talent, not skills and knowledge only. I'll highlight on this when we you know, move into the next slide. 7% believe that startup companies are going to give you the employability of future. Now imagine wow momos, cars 24 seven, flipped cards of the world. Did you hear about them when you were in class 10? Did you know about them? Amazons of the world? No, but they are paving ways. And how are they paving ways? Because they are companies who are talking about the future of technology. We are talking about IT. We are talking about people who can gain strength in IT. And those are the companies that will survive today. And God knows in another five years, 10 years, where these things will go, we really don't know. So, I was reading in a little uh, you know, magazine, uh, a book rather, which I was lately reading. It's by Kauf, uh, Buckingham and Kaufman and he points out very important three areas that all of us keep harping every day. I definitely do, your know, teachers do, probably somebody you meet from the corporate will say, you know, think out of the box. Have you heard this? Be creative. Now nobody teaches us how to be creative here, isn't it? 
Does anybody tell you take these two medicines and become creative? No. But they definitely tell you to be that. Why are they telling you that? Because today's scenario and down 22 ahead in another 10 years, 12 years down the line, these are the most important things that you will be talking about. Skills, which means how is things done? Knowledge, are you aware of your information? And finally, talent, recruiting patterns through feelings and behaviors. Very important area. So today, when companies will come to hire you, they will hire you for what? They will hire you for your skills and knowledge. And they will fire you for what? Because you do not have talent. How strange is that? They are hiring me for my skills. They are hiring me for my talent. But they are losing me out or they are pushing me out because I am not a talented person. Now what is the difference then? The difference is when I say skill, I talk about the condition in which you can perform. So if I give you a mathematical issue, you can use an Excel to solve it. So that's your skill. Very simply I put it, correct? So if you know what an Excel is and you know what Java is and you know what how to crack a code, you are a skilled person. And this knowledge of Excel, this knowledge of Java, this knowledge of .NET is your knowledge. So that takes care of your skill and that takes care of your knowledge. Are we all understanding this? Yes? Then what is creativity? What is, what is innovation? What is thinking out of the box? All that is talent. So therefore, in the corporate, they don't say that I am a campus manager coming to recruit. They say, I'm a talent manager coming to recruit. Have you heard this term? So talent acquisition is what they use in the corporate. So they are hiring you for your skills. They are hiring you for your knowledge. But they are retaining you because you are a creative person. Because you are an emotional person who can think. Because you are a social person. You can interact and become a team. Now, nobody taught you those skills and knowledges. Those are skills and knowledges that you need to acquire on your own over time and keep harnessing it. So that's how you can be hired for your skills, you can be hired for your knowledge, you will remain in the organization as a valued employee if you have talent. Because today, honestly speaking, if you see, there are robots all around the place. Correct? Now these robots have skills. These robots have talents. Do they have talent? They can't think. Who's doing the thinking? Who is building the robot? So who's important? We are important in what area? In skill knowledge? In your creative area? Strategizing area? Who's strategizing it for you? You are strategizing. You've given a problem. You have to solve it. The robot cannot solve the problem. The robot can only take an input and provide you with an output. This artificial intelligence maneuveration is done by our IT students and the students in the technology area. Correct? So you are building yourself not only for the skills and knowledge, but moreover for talent so that you can keep innovating yourself every now and then. So going forward, the four years that you are here, you will not only skill and knowledge yourself up, you must learn how to talent yourself up too. Next. So are you ready? That's the first important question. Right now, are you ready? Honest answer. Are you ready? Ready? Come on, don't sleep. I know you had your lunch. Are you ready? Yes or no? Yeah. Ah, so you're ready to? Plunge, correct? That's very important. Today, let's do a little comparison. To 2000, to, uh, 20, 2000, let's say, there was a set of skills that Economic Forum had identified for talents. And those were in the order. So in 2020, uh, 2000, uh, we were looking at number one uh, goodness, complex problem solving. So if somebody had the ability to solve problem, wonderful. 
we will take that person. But today, they are not looking at that. They are looking at complex problem solving as a newer trend to keep the talent on. Second, coordinating with others. Number two, here we are looking at critical thinking. What is critical thinking? Which means a single problem can have multiple solutions. Remember? So we are not looking at one solution or we are not looking at the perfect solution. We are looking at critical thinking and coming and deriving to an area where we can have multiple solutions. Creativity, very important. There it was people management. Today you don't need to manage people so much. You have artificial intelligence, they can be managed. With artificialness, with robots, with bots, chats, everything. They can be managed. But today creativity is important. Talent is important. Can you think on your feet? If a problem comes in, can you quickly solve it in no time? That's more important. Coordinating with others while negotiating with others. Earlier, you had to negotiate with people. Today, you are supposed to coordinate, not negotiate. Negotiate has, negotiation has an upper hand, that I negotiate and I win. Today, it's not like that. Nobody wins. We coordinate and come to a cordial situation where it's a win-win for all of us. So those are the skills which we are looking at for the future rights. Judgment and decision making, service orientation. Today, judgment is needed in every nook and corner of our understanding. So you'll see while we are moving from 2000 to 2022, the skill sets are changing drastically. And we are supposed to become more human in nature. Who's that gentleman, Mr. Khan, who says being human? Honestly, we are becoming more human with technology in our aid. So we are not driven minus technology, we are not driven minus being human, but we are marrying technology and the humanness of the world. That's the new challenge for our students for the future. We can skip this side, it just says future work trends are changing and I'll show you which areas they are changing in. So where do my future students actually get engaged in the job positioning? So today there is one set of job that they can get into. Tomorrow or in two years time, while the scenario changes, they would be getting into jobs like industrial engineering. Now you will say those are mechanical engineering stuff, no? So there is no mechanical engineering and core engineering and IT engineering. It cannot merge. Everything is going to become dynamic. There is no watertight compartment. So imagine an IT person will actually go and work in the firm of a BMW or an industry in BMW to understand what technology is all about. The Teslas of the world, they're talking about driverless cars, they're talking about robotic cars. Now who's going to create the codes? It's a code engineering, correct? So there is nothing in the world today, it is the divide is becoming so narrow that we, if we think that, you know, we are going to sit in one stylo chair saying that, okay, I'm an IT guy, I'm only going to do codes and cracks. Sorry, boss, you will not get into that area. Because the world is changing and you need to change, adapt the changeability. So data scientists, of course, something that we already have in our institute. Information systems and managers. So we have managers who will only manage information with the help of IT. Those jobs are being created, the IBMs of the world, the Deloitte's of the world, the Capgeminis of the world, they are all using a smart integrated information system. Now who's creating them? Humans, correct? Talents, not skills and knowledge. Those are the backups. Sales engineers, we fear sales, you know, all of us, I do. Somebody gives me a piece of pen and says, sell it, my God, I don't know how to sell it. But we're selling every day, I'm selling my placement to you. I'm selling, correct? Yes or no? I'm trying to make a presentation to my future, uh, you know, candidates to be happily active people who can take a career up. I'm selling. So why sales engineers are needed in IT professions? Because IT is a complex area. And only IT professionals know how that complex area can be understood. Not somebody like a non-BTEC like me. I will never understand what coding is all about. Unless I'm a user. Now, who is going to sell these concepts, these difficult IT concepts to people who do not understand? So, you have an IT product and you want to sell it to somebody like Harsh Nyotia, who is a hardcore business person. So, who is going to do the speak? Somebody like Harsh Nyotia, an MBA? No. 
obviously the IT person has to do the cutoff because he understands or she understands what the background of that complex project is all about because he is the one who's done it he is the one who has been trained he knows what IT is so these kind of roles are coming up for the future technical writer content writing blogging you can make millions of money all across the world today people in Amazon people in Flipkart earn money not through just coding they just supervise products have you seen those there are a group of people who just look at the product give a specific of the product break it down into simple language for users and they are getting money all across the world so simple concepts that can be digested by commoners like us need to be written posted blogged vlogged now these are all terms which we never heard in class 10 or 12 correct we are listening to them now thanks to it software developers of course that's never going to go out of fashion that's very fashionable definitely but the face may change fintech products what are fintechs financial technology come now imagine did you think that a finance and a technology would marry anyway any more time no today we have cloud banking we have concepts of transactional credit card we have concepts like neo banking new age banking where you do not need a physical bank you have money in your wallet and you can spend it now i have money in my wallet and i'm spending it but how am i spending it because i have technology there i have it there therefore i can sell it correct so it people should not only look at the it companies it people should look at the opportunity to be on top of all companies jobs are open for all sectors and finally chatbots which make our life very easy you go to any website today middle of the night you have no human intervention but the chatbots will pop up and say hello sir can i help you hello ma'am can i help you and you can have a fantastic conversation with them the supply chain management is not broken so these are the newer area of jobs we are talking about for our students what are the skills that i need then what are the knowledge that i need check it out i think my screen is not showing for you okay oh there's a problem in the projector so basically what we're looking at is creative skills skills for communication we need skills in innovation i am able to innovate i am able to understand a problem give a feedback to it that is what is needed today for my new it professionals projecting the companies it's already shaking with the heaviness <laughs> so many companies the so heavy duty ones so the screen is also shaking with fear so these are the companies that you can be a part of i can see heads moving here and there we will meet before you come in for placement but this is just giving you a synopsis that these logos are not limited they have more scopes and you have a fantastic future provided you have your skills ready knowledge ready and you build on your talent so i had told me that he would uh, i would like to share the placement record i had pulled out the entire record from 2012 I thought it was relevant you know because you need to see how we have moved over here the percentages show very clearly 2012 13 14 15 moving on we had fantastic teams here and when i say placement records excel and today in 22 we are at this 143.33 still counting our babies to move in more So I'm very happy, and thank you to the fantastic HODs, fantastic departmental health, the placement team survived fantastically. <laughs> Now remember, when I say talent, it also means being together. Future is one place which you should have a, you know, you should learn what acting like a team is all about. We work in perfect harmony with each other. many times we are not in harmony with each other too correct we fight we shout we do but at the end of the day when we know there's a goal to be achieved we are all putting our heads together so we call that the future plus plus that's one of the results of future plus plus this year in 22 uh, these are the students who have aced you can go to the next one yeah. and uh, they have received four jobs offer five this is seven job offer five job offers four 
three and two. And this lady chases it because he's done, she's done it. Janri has done us proud by a 9.5 lakh package. Where is Janri? Wow. Please stand up. Take the ball. So you do us proud, Janri. Thank you very much. Okay? So this says that what you have as your future in future. So going back, I would say, you know, I always believe in this quote. I don't know whether you'd agree with me or not. 25 years into corporate, I've grayed my hair well. Of course, Tia does not believe that, that grayed my hair. <laughs> but anyway, the gray hairs also give you some gray cells too. So it's like, you know, in marriage to each other. That when the going gets tough, the tough will get going. So make yourself really tough. So that you can crawl, walk, run, and do the sprint all at the same time when the industry demands it with talent. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, for your wonderful talk. Being one of the most renowned departments in Future Institute of Engineering and Management, the Department of Information Technology, ever since 2007, strives to create an ambience of academic excellence in which new ideas, research, and scholarship flourishes, and from which the leaders and innovators of tomorrow emerge. Our department has taken many initiatives in the past, as well as they are taking initiative in the present scenario for the betterment of our loving students. Codex is one such initiative. In today's rapidly changing environment, programming skills are essential tools that can be utilized and incorporated in various fields and domains. Hence, it becomes essential to equip young minds with such skills. Codex aims to establish a coding culture in the IT department, reaching every student passionate about coding. Parallel to this coding journey, we have also introduced Prostuti, a placement training program organized on a regular basis by the faculty members of IT department to give special attention to the subjects required in placement like data structures, operating system, C sharp, Java, Salesforce, algorithm, and software engineering. I'm happy to let you know that students have given a huge response. Along with this said initiative, we have been arranging mock interview sessions for the last few years. Aim of this session is to make our students familiar with the ambience and criteria required to face the real life interviews. Our department is blessed with brilliant students and all of them are superstars to us. All of them show a perfect balance in their studies and college activities despite their busy schedules required to do prep for their placement. Let me light you with some of the individuals. Harshit Banwar, <laughs> Tony Gandhi, Abhishek Sinha, Anushka Dutta, Vishesh Kumar Singh, Nishu Kumar, Sonali Ghosh, Samridhi Kumari, Ardi Dar Gupto, Shubhashish Pal, Ravi Kumar, Mukund Narayan, and many more. We are happy to announce that some of our superstar students are present with us today in this dive. Now, I'd like to call upon uh, the stage Professor Tapos Roy, HOD CSC department. <laughs> Dr. Anujan Chakravarti, HOD Computer and Application Department. <laughs> Professor Sushendi Bukharti, Assistant Professor, Placement Coordinator of IT Department. Thank you. Now I'm handing over the mic to Professor Tapos Roy as a coordinator of the panel and requesting him to conduct the same.
Good afternoon. So it is a I think he has some urgent work, so he has moved out. So my colleagues, uh, my beloved students, the young bright faces which I was missing for last two years. The this young, bright and determined faces. Okay. So these faces we are missing for last two years. Now we are back to be again offline. And looking at this kind of uh, bright faces, I always charge myself up. Okay. So again, this offline uh, era has started. And, and we are really enjoying. Now today uh, we are here to have a uh, panel discussion. Okay. So, what is the title of this today's panel discussion? Can anyone tell? What is the title of today's panel discussion? Can anyone say? No answer. So, somebody can you show what is the title of today's discussion? What is written over here? Or it is your career. What is written there? But I am reading it is your career. So this IT is information technology is basically the uh, area which basically a big area where different kinds of people are coming like from CSE from uh, data science, from artificial intelligence, from information technology, from IoT robotics kind of stream. Everyone is coming under this information technology umbrella or the computer science umbrella. Okay. So yes, it is IT is your area. Yes. That is the thing. Today's scenario, yes, it is IT is the career. So wherever you are, you have to come to IT to build your career. So that is the umbrella where you will be having the career, the brightest career you will be having. Now what is career? Are you pursuing your career now? See this kind of, are you, how you people are feeling asleep or some kind of, let us communicate. Are you, are you building your career now? So you are in what stage of your career? Sorry? So you are in learning career. That is, I, I have never heard any term in English for learning career. What kind of a career you are now pursuing? Trying to build. Use the word career. You are in your academic career. You are building your academic career. Okay? And from academic career, you will be going to professional career. That's correct. Who, who, who told? Who? Oh, big hand for him. <laughs> so, you will be from academic career, you will be going to your professional career. Now, this professional career, where you are putting the stepping stone? From where you are going to the professional career and what is the stepping stone for the first uh, foundation stone for the going into from academic career to professional career. What is that? <coughs> Sorry. What is that? How will you be going from your academic career to professional career? Someone is prompting. Yes, through placement. Through placement. And that placement you will be getting from the, you are at the end of the academic career, you will be getting a placement and you will be going out to your professional career. Correct? Is it clear? How many pockets you are having in your pants? So all the pockets should be filled up with offer letter. 
So you have to go in that way. So that is you are basically clapping for yourself. Okay. So you have to do that. Now coming to the coming back to the professional career. So this professional career, you are building your you are the first stepping stone in your placement. And today we are here for this IT is your career for the information technology. And today really I am telling you, although the uh, our PV sir has told for the discussion panel, but I am no mood in uh, any discussion panel. Today I am in a celebration mood. Okay, so I am totally in a celebration mood. I am here today to celebrate the successes of the students of 2022 batch of the IT department. Do you agree with me? So let us celebrate today. So this is not some kind of a theoretical hard, 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 hard words and all these things. Let us celebrate the success. But before, if I want to change the panel discussion to celebration, I have first thing is that I have to take the permission of the uh, host and I have to take the permission of the my partners in crime, Dr. Onimban Chakraborty and uh, Professor uh, Prasenjit Mukherjee. So, PV sir, are you allowing me? Okay, sir, it is in your hand. Okay, thank you. And AC uh, sir? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, the, my partners in crime, they are also allowing me to celebrate today. Okay. So, you are also ready, no? Yes, sir. So, let us start the celebration then. Let, let me call one by one the stars of today's evening. So, let me first call Janabi Oja. <laughs> he he cracked, he cracked, cognizant and Infosys in the role of specialist programmer. Then let me call every hand for Janovi. Let, let me take out the kit. You use the added time of examination. I am also using here. So I would request Namrota to come and felicitate Janabi. So next I am calling Sheta Sheka. Sheta Crack, Bilakov, and Vipro, and a uh, big hand for Sheta. I would request Neha to come up on and uh, felicitate Sheta. Two Neha. Now I would request Devdeep, Devdeep Sarkar to come on the stage. <laughs> Devdeep Crack, Rupro, Capgemini and Mindy. And I would request Devosmita to uh, felicitate uh, Devdeep. A big hand for Devdeep. Now I will request Obidu Ghosh to come onto the stage. Obidu Crack Cognizant in Heavy Metro, Future Age, TCS and Wipro. I will request Sanjita to felicitate Obidu. Now 
आई विल रिक्वेस्ट सोमार्जो सामंतो टू कम ऑन टू द स्टेज सोमार्जो क्रैक कॉग्निजेंट माइंड फ्री एंड विप्रो आई विल रिक्वेस्ट श्रद्धा टू कम अप एंड फेलिसिटेट सोमार्जो एवरी एंड फॉर सोमार्जो Now I will request Sarfaraz Ahmed to come onto the stage. Sarfaraz, Jack, Mindy, and Kovlian, and I would request Tiasha to come up on and felicitate Sarfaraz. So the celebration team is ready. Are you ready? So let us go to the uh, stage and let us start the celebration. Okay. So now we are on the dash. Okay. So let us start the celebration. So before the celebration begins, I would request uh, Dr. Anirban Chakraborty, the head of Computer Application Department, to say few words. Thank you, sir. A very uh, good afternoon and hearty welcome to all the participants, dignitaries in this session of panel discussion. The purpose of organizing this panel discussion is to hear from the triumphant students of Information Technology Department who have been successful in multiple campus interviews. There are many questions which come in our mind before appearing in an interview and they remain unanswered. Which subjects to focus most during the campus interviews? Which are the best sources for aptitude test? What type of competitive coding should we participate to improve our programming skills? Which type of projects should we do and what type of technology enhancement should we do so that it helps in us during the interview? I believe this session will address such unanswered questions. I strongly believe that this panel discussion will be beneficial to all the participants, particularly the students who will be appearing in their campus recruitment drives within a short span of time, so that they can prepare more smartly and more effectively in the campus placements. So without waiting further, we can start the panel discussion session, which will be a very interactive session, and the session we have been waiting for eagerly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sir. But Mr. Sir has beat me. He agreed that it is not a panel discussion but a uh, uh, celebration. But while talking, he used the again term panel discussion. Anyway, Mr. Sir, so in the form of panel discussion, we will celebrate. Okay, so I would now request Professor Prashidit Mukherjee, Assistant Professor of Information Technology Department, to say a few words. Thank you, sir. 
First of all, good afternoon and welcome everyone. What is the color of my shirt? Sky. Have you seen the star? Have you seen the star? These are the star. Okay. These are the star. So today I am with my star to celebrate as the star says that to celebrate our success. So please enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you, Prem sir. So basically, uh, we are now starting the celebration, and Prem sir has not uh, deviated from the celebration. He has stick to the celebration word. Okay. So let us start. So first thing is that I would like to uh, know from you all that from what kind of a family background or from which kind of a place you have come here in future. Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Jandi Oza, and I've been born and brought up in Kolkata. So my family comprises of my parents, my mother and father, and I also have an elder brother. My father is a, a working man, works in the private sector, and my mom is a homemaker. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Shweta Shikha. I am from Nanbad, Jharkhand, and my father is a teacher, and my mother is a service woman, and I have two brothers and sisters. That's all. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, I am Devi Sarkar. I am born and brought up in uh, Kolkata, West Bengal. I currently reside in Bhuria. Uh, I live with my parents. My uh, father is a government employee, and my mother is a housewife. That's all. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abhirup Ghosh, and I have been born and brought up in Kolkata, West Bengal. In my in my family, uh, I stay with my parents, and I have a little brother. And my father is a maths teacher, and my mother is a homemaker. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shomarjo Shamanto. I was born and brought up here in Kolkata, West Bengal. I currently reside in the Gorpa area. I live with my parents. My father is a, an English teacher, and my mother is a homemaker. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, Sarfaraz Ahmed. Uh, uh, my family currently resides in Delhi, and uh, my father is a zonal manager uh, in an automobile company, and my mother is a homemaker. And I have basically three siblings. Thank you. So we uh, now know from which background and all he they have come. Now I would request Asi sir to ask them that what why they have come to PM and with what kind of an expectation all these things. Asi sir. Yes, uh, as sir rightly said. Uh, why did you choose the uh, Future Institute of Engineering and Management for pursuing your graduation? And what was your expectation when you joined this college? So, uh, I got into Future through West Bengal Joint Delhi. So, like everyone, after my results were out, I did my fair bit of research. I spoke to some seniors and relatives. So, I asked them that according to my rank, what are the colleges? colleges that I can get and what do these colleges have to offer. So uh, I had good things to hear about future. So what I was told was that the faculties here are very helpful. They are, uh, they give you individual attention when needed, they're very friendly. And apart from academics, uh, I also got to know that future has a good culture of co-curricular activities. There are a lot of fest events that are happening here. So I thought uh, when there is something that's offering me the best of both worlds, why not take it? And that's why I chose Future and luckily I got into it also. As for the second part of the question that what were my expectations? To be honest, uh, back in 2018 when I joined as a fresher, I didn't really know what to expect. But I think what I was looking forward to was a journey, uh, an experience filled with learning, uh, a lot of fun where I get to experience a variety of new things and of course a decent enough placement uh, by the end of four years. Thank you. Put the Anyone else wants to answer the question? So what Ganavi has mentioned that uh, when she did the research, she came to know that the, uh, the faculty members so I would request you to give a big hand for the faculty members of this college. 
So now I will request PM sir to carry on the celebration. Thank you sir. Now planning is one of the major key for the success. And the planning for the proper time with the with the proper plan make you successful career. Now at which stage in your life you started your career plan? So when I was in class 11 and 12, I had computer science as my optional subject. So from there only I developed a little bit of interest regarding this field. And after completing my 12th, I have to do engineering. So I gave WBJ exam and I got FIEM, which is one of the renowned college in West Bengal. So luckily I have got IT department in this college. And in first year, I was not exposure to many technologies and second year I learned C, O, Java and I developed more interest. From there only I decided that I will continue my career in this IT sector only. Thank you. Uh, please. So thank you uh, on, uh, Shweta. Now in the semesters you have different different kinds of subjects. In uh, first, sem uh, first semester, you are having some subjects and second semester, basically your uh, subjects of deep uh, core, your uh, topic like C programming and all these things are starting. And then from there onwards, you are having different, different kinds of a subjects. So you have it, uh, what is my question to them? that you have your semester study, you have your preparation effort for the campus placement. So how do you have basically managed this? Yes, I would like to answer the question. Uh, basically, I would say that uh, uh, everything is a uh, game of time management basically. So uh, I, I can recall that uh, my college classes are, were from 9 a.m. to particularly 5.30 p.m. And which includes the placement training classes also, which includes uh, the aptitude classes and also the core subject classes. So uh, I got much help from there also because the uh, alternative classes regarding placement training was also much important. Uh, the second thing uh, I can say is like uh, the assignments that were assigned to us through the teachers of the department. Uh, were basically relevant to the placement course also, like placement training or placement preparation. Uh, so that also helped me a lot uh, for preparing for the placement. Uh, and that actually uh, basically uh, don't there is no need to like uh, uh, worry about uh, that uh, I have to prepare something else uh, otherwise from the at my home. That was my view regarding this. Thank you. Thank you, Sarbraj. Actually, in this uh, college, you have seen that there are different kinds of students classes there. Have you seen that? So, what I always uh, tell my students that uh, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Okay? So, you have to play. You have to be involved in your extracurricular or co-curricular kind of activity. Now, I would request uh, PM sir to focus on this co-curricular and extracurricular activities. So uh, PM has lot of extracurricular activities, lot of clubs are there. So what is your honest feeling? Whether this club or extracurricular activities make you a perfect uh, uh, professional and uh, perfect um, human being. What is your view? Sir, uh, when I came to this college as a fresher in 2018, I decided that I would need an avenue for my um, creativity in a different way than academics as well. So when I came to this college, I saw that this college offered clubs for the same purpose and I decided to join the official film club of uh, Bhutra Institute of Engineering and Management, which is FFR Productions. Now, as for uh, developing yourself as a human being, when I joined my club, I had no expectation of what it would do for me as a human being or advancing in my career. But now, looking back, I feel that it is extremely important to have a connection with something other than your academic stuff to build yourself as well in a different way. 
the thing which I cherish the most, which my club taught me, is uh, teamwork. How important it is, what the essence of it is, and how if you miss teamwork, you will probably not be able to grow as an individual and offer as much as you uh, otherwise would have been able to to uh, the uh, company where you will work as a professional. Because uh, in any company, let alone in the IT industry, nobody works as a single unit isolatedly. Everyone works in a team, even a group of teams work together, as uh, far as I know. So I think that helped me, uh, uh, my teamwork in my club, organizing various fests, events, other workshops, that helped me a lot to get the essence of teamwork and why it is so important. Would someone like to add something? Else? Okay, so as Swamarjo mentioned that uh, in our college there are different clubs like uh, cultural, sports, uh, then technical, then uh, like film club. So uh, when I joined the college, uh, I, I was basically interested in the technical stuff like technical, non-technical and management stuff. So I decided to join the technical club of our college that is Explorica and uh, like uh, there are different departments in the club like uh, we can say like tech departments non-tech departments, management departments are there, graphic designing departments are there, photography wing is there, uh, so robotics uh, part is there. So uh, we got to learn a lot of things uh, from this also because uh, um, at the end of the, uh, like when you are creating your resume, then actually if you mention that you, are, you have some manage, management skills, uh, like uh, that would really help you a lot uh, and uh, the front panel uh, panel discussion, uh, panel interviewer will understand that uh, this guy has uh, some uh, uh, like uh, team teamwork skills or management skills or uh, like uh, uh, these things are of stuff. And uh, basically, it will uh, basically it will help you grow by developing your communication skills and managerial skills. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Sarfraz. Now, can you anyone tell me that? Uh, when a doctor is basically sitting in his chamber and the patients are there and a IT engineer is working in a company, what is the basic difference? Can anyone tell? A doctor is there, the patients are coming to see that to the, doc, the doctor and an IT engineer is working in any of the uh, IT sector company. Can anyone tell what is the basic difference? Yeah. The doctor works alone with a client. Correct. The doctor is working alone. So he has no, he has no team involvement when he is sitting in the, his uh, chamber. But as an engineer, he has to work in a team. Correct. Do you agree with this? Louder, yeah. So he has to work in a team and this kind of a co-curricular, extracurricular activities, what Somarjo and Sarfaraz, they mentioned that it increase their communication skill, it increase their managerial capability, it increase their how to manage projects and all these things. Because you might be having four guys that are working here in a club in college where four guys are having from different for different regions of India, they are having different food habits, they are having different language to communicate. So, but with that team, you have to work and you have to make the job done. So, that is basically you are being groomed through that so that you can succeed in the case of when you will be going into the industry. So, so that is the basically the reason the engineer is working in a team and this kind of a co-curricular and extracurricular activities is basically enhancing your managerial capability, communication skills, project handling capability, all these things. And team, team, working in a team, because you will not be working in alone. So now I would request AC sir to uh, proceed with the uh, next phase of the celebration. Thank you, sir. Uh, we all know that uh, projects are an integral part of learning. So unless you implement the projects, you don't know all the aspects of programming. My next question is that, how are projects significant in your campus placements and when should you start preparing your projects? As I mentioned that projects is an integral part of our campus placement, so it's absolutely true. 
uh, because in the campus interviews, the interviewer will ask you what projects you have done and uh, the uh, questions related to projects because project uh, not only boosts you one's resume but also it uh, reflects the practical skills, the technologies that you have learned through your professional career that is detailed for four years and you have to apply that uh, technical skills on, on the practical platform. And uh, uh, another point that uh, Sarah and Shomar mentioned that is teamwork. So, in uh, when a uh, pressure goes to a company, he or she has to work in a project only. So that's a real life problem project. So that in that project also there is teamwork. You have to work with different people, and all people may not have the same kind of opinion or same ideas. They have different thoughts. They have different ideas. They have to come and close and uh, club together to uh, make that project successful. And uh, regarding uh, the question that when one should start the project work is that in our college uh, there are many opportunities uh, from our first year. There is an event called the directrix which is conducted by our technical club in the first year where each and every first year can uh, participate and uh, showcase their uh, skills be it a software project or hardware project. In second year another event called exhibit is also there. Similar event that is the project competition or project participation. And after that, uh, in third year, uh, our faculty helps us to do some mini projects uh, for our internals, and as well as between the semester gaps that we have between our uh, fourth and fifth semester, we have uh, two three mini projects. So these projects helps us uh, to not only to boost our resume but also uh, to uh, build our practical skills as well. And uh, lastly, uh, when the placement season starts, uh, there is an industrial training that uh, one should have to participate compulsorily after. Uh, sixth semester. So in that industrial training also you will get one project, uh, very, good, uh, very good practical life, uh, real life project also you, will, uh, you can get and uh, you can also do that and put that in your resume as well. And at the end of the uh, third year there is the actual final year project which is the best part according to me in, our, in the entire four, uh, four year journey. So where you can showcase all the skills that you have learned from first year to third year and uh, do the next year. Thank you. Thank you, David. So you ha you have come to know that the project is a very important thing in your this engineering career. Now you have uh, already heard a couple of things from uh, as a part of the celebration. Different terminologies might be just coming to you for the very first time. Uh, do you have anything coming up in your mind to ask us, or the ask this starts? Anything is coming up in your mind? I am opening the house for the any, any kind of questions. You, if you having any kind of questions in your mind after this, already that part of celebration that we have done, you can you you can you are you are free to ask. So should I tell that everything is very clear like water? Everything is like jalabat toro. My one cute baby, Samriti, is uh, prompting me crisp, crisp and clear. Yes. So is it crisp and clear? Yes, Great. Now there are different kind of technologies. You are hearing every day different, different kind of words and all these things. AI, ML, deep learning. Sir, do you have any question in mind? Last time, on behalf of the students, actually, they are. I think they are still in pandemic. Okay, <laughs> so on behalf of them, <laughs> and we just mentioned about the project, uh, uh, taking the project. So, uh, do you have any? Uh, do you have any idea before starting the project that uh, I am going to do like this and do like that? And if you don't have that type of idea, so from where do you get that idea? Like, like for example, suppose uh, uh, I have an idea about doing something which will uh, about machine learning. Okay, so specific task. Okay, something like that. Suppose uh, in my childhood, I I always think about I do a project on. Um, uh, a, a, a device which will uh, take uh, characteristics of a, uh, of a, of a person and it decides whether 
there is uh, a chance of getting becoming a mad okay becoming mad so do you have any idea like that before starting the project hello sir so like you have said having an idea so like when the third year started i have joined an industrial training center like it was not an exact industrial training center but it actually it was a startup and they were providing industrial training so i joined it and after joining at the end of their training the project session comes now like in my mindset there i was always thinking about like i have to build something innovative and i believe that innovation lies in the simple things uh, so what i did i built a digital diary and what is the advantage of that like in our mobile all of the mobile if you have a samsung phone you get samsung notes if you have a mi phone you get mi notes in the uh, iphone it's something else now for this simple note app you are you have to use various applications but you if you just change a company you have to write your notes again or you have to sms to it to yourself but if you just continue using the same brand mobile it will be automatically synced to either in my account or icloud or something like that so what i did i built a digital diary so it will be like hassle free i just opened up my mobile i just type and in that uh, uh, and in that uh, product i have implemented a feature where you don't have to push any save button you just have a need a stable internet connection go on typing it will be automatically synced to my server and with this product what happens you change your devices no issue you open your laptop you get the note you open your mobile phone get the note you write once and you get it everywhere even if you don't have your phone you can take your friend's phone log into your account and you'll get that so i said and even with this like when i sat in the interview uh, they were continuously asking me uh, questions like like okay so you have this mi note this samsung note so why have you built this so you like if you build something from scratch with, with your own idea you'll be able to answer this question like who have i mentioned that sales salesman like a salesman should know their product like uh, they know their product best no one should know uh, better than them so it's like in case of project it's same like i should know my project no one else should like find a defect if they find a defect i should answer it i should handle it it's like that thank you thank you thank you abhul and thank you ssr ssr give a big hand for ssr he has asked a question on behalf of you all but don't feel shy come on now you are hearing a different kind of technology you are hearing different kind of jargon like ai ml deep learning neural network blah 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 all these things okay now what i would ask the star that what kind of technologies now are in the demand in the it sector at this moment okay uh, so from an engineer's perspective i am saying that evolution of technology will be constant no one can break it like 10 years ago no one would have believed that we will be using smart watches and all whenever a new tech or a new programming language is coming in the market all the it sectors are trying to adapt that one so in order to stay in the industry all the engineers should adapt to the new technology now from when we joined our my college the famous technologies were like java de java development and lamp stack development and all and now when i am passing out of the uh, of the college new technologies are coming up machine learning ai uh, ai uh, and along with that uh, natural language processing and along with that we were, we used to do is lamp stack in first year now it is going to be mon stack mean stack like this technology is continuously evolving and if you go to any company they are also converting their old projects with the help of the new technology now if you just go to a project uh, like see a project which is developed in java they are rewriting it with the help of javascript or with the help of python because python is a new emerging technology with the help of python you could do data science processing or machine learning in few seconds or in few minutes which was not possible to java so like the, so currently what industry is looking for is like creative people who can do, who can adapt to this new technology called artificial intelligence machine learning data science node mon and we said about thank you thank you abhul uh, actually have you heard the term called coding everyone so the coding is a skill what you should have 
if you want to be placed in an IT sector company, make it very clear, coding, okay? So what I would ask, because, but there is something more than coding. So what I would ask ACSAT to just, uh, as a part of the celebration, to know that part, that part of the coding from the our stars, ACSAT. Thank you. Today, uh, worldwide, there are many type of competitive coding activities which are taking place, which adds value to our programming skills. Uh, a number of sites are there, like CodeChef, HackerRank. So my question is, uh, whether such competitive coding activities add value during your campus interview process, and how do you prepare for such competitive coding activities? Let me tell you a fact about myself. I was not aware of the CP till second year and at that time the coronavirus had came. So it was a bit late for me to start with uh, competitive coding. So I don't have much exposure to this field but at the starting of third year I started. So there are various sites where you can have practice such as HackerRank, the Code Chef and many more. As a beginner, you can start with hacker end as it has easy level question and then intermediate and level of difficult one. So you can start with the hacker end and in the starting you will find that it's very difficult to cope up. You will get stuck between the problems and all that. So my suggestion is that you should take help from your friends and faculty member and Google is always there with you. So uh, at last practice as much as possible. Yeah, uh, so to add to it, I think uh, to what you actually need for competitive coding is a great knowledge in data structures and algorithms and I think all of you already know. So uh, to learn different uh, algorithms and to practice questions, there, there are n number of questions available on Geek for Geeks and I guess there's no question that a company is going to ask you in any written round or in an interview that is not available there. So that is something you can refer to to prepare and uh, to be honest uh, competitive coding uh, requires a lot of dedication and hard work it's not something you can uh, learn in one day or two days it's a long one to one or two years of uh, uh, hard work so not everybody does it uh, even i have not done i'm not there on uh, competitive coding uh, sites like coach or course courses but there's something called lead code uh, which has questions uh, with the uh, company tag uh, and topic tag, so you can refer to that. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Shweta and Janavi, for sharing experiences. So you come to know about something called competitive coding. And in addition to that, you have come to know a couple of terms called hacker rank, hacker app, code shape, lead code, and all these things. So my request is that please go to those sites and have a feel what is that. Okay. So next actually I will request PMS to carry on this celebration. Thank you sir. Uh, most probably your campus journey started from the fifth semester and onwards. And it is ended uh, to the very uh, last 11th hours of the eighth semester. So it's a long duration, almost it is one year and one and half year. Now, uh, I think the path is not so smooth. You face many challenges, some challenges may be scheduled and some challenges may be unscheduled. So what are the challenges please uh, you share with us? Uh, uh, the, first, uh, the first and foremost challenge for everyone, uh, like uh, to create your CV, like uh, to create a strong CV. That CV should include like uh, the relevant skills required for the particular job uh, or you can also include some extracurricular activities that you are aware of or you are uh, like uh, uh, you have participated in that. So uh, I would recommend that uh, create your CV in such a way like uh, the things you know, uh, the uh, skills you know, you should add only those skills in that CV. In that CV because it might create a problem at the time of interview if you are including anything, any topics 
that uh, you don't know and you are adding into your CV. So uh, you should uh, like uh, add up only those things that are uh, like you know or that is required for that particular job skill. The second challenge that I guess uh, everyone should have faced that is the time management, uh, the managing time. So in placement exams, there are uh, rounds in which a particular stipulated time is given for the particular section. So uh, basically we have to manage the time also for the aptitude section or the coding section or the communication section. So uh, you can actually improve your uh, time management skills by participating in the uh, mock test uh, given on different sites like uh, Talent Battle or Prep Insta. You can uh, like uh, uh, go to uh, the sites and you can practice uh, uh, like you can man uh, try to like uh, you can give a mock test and you will understand that how much time I'm, I am giving to a particular section, how much I need more to uh, like work on that particular uh, site. The third challenge I would like uh, say like uh, everyone would have faced in the COVID times like uh, when, when we are preparing for interviews and our interviews were uh, taken online. So uh, there might be any connection, uh, connection issues or power cut in your home. Then I, at that time you, you don't need to panic. You, you just uh, like uh, 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 refer to the respective contacts. You can like uh, uh, mail to the respective contacts given by that particular company. Uh, the fourth thing I can say is like uh, different companies have different strategies of hiring. Like uh, uh, there are few companies uh, who have four rounds. There are few companies who have three rounds. Uh, like in, in few companies there are active, active round, coding round and uh, technical and HR interview. There are few companies uh, which uh, have active uh, means extra round that is uh, grammar section or communication round. So we have, uh, we can, what we can do is like we can just uh, uh, from time to time we can self upgrade our knowledge. Uh, that, that's the thing like that will help you to uh, like prepare for that particular company. Thank you. Thank you, sir. sir. So uh, you have heard some more uh, new words, aptitude, HR, technical round and all these things. Because as I told, I, I, I want to add in here. This technical is basically a round where you have to face technical kind of a question and HR is basically human resource, HR food for is human resource, there you have to face the HR kind of a question uh, and uh, through that uh, you have to go to the journey and get the placement. But as Sarfraz told that from the uh, offline to online the journey uh, earlier everything was offline uh, the interview process also now we are coming to the online so sometimes the only thing is that in online mode at the end of the interview you cannot play national anthem do you agree with that do you agree in online interview you cannot play national anthem do you agree with that? Why? <laughs> Don't feel shy. We are in a celebration mode. They are on a uh, formal start, tie and everything. Now if there is a national anthem at online mode, You people are not enjoying the celebration? So feeble boy. Had you, you had your lunch today? Okay, at least now I am hearing some voices. <laughs> anyway, now see, every one is having skills, knowledge, talent, creativity, so many words you are hearing. For last couple of hours, I think uh, more than an hour, you are hearing so many words. Now, what I would ask them that apart from the skills, knowledge, talent, everything, what kind of a cutting edge the recruiting company is expecting from the uh, student or the candidate? So, in my opinion, uh, what an organization is actually looking for 
is uh, your strong hold on your computer science fundamentals and great problem solving skills. These are the two main things that they want from you. So, uh, but this is something everybody is preparing, right? If all of us sitting here and even uh, the ones maybe who did not, uh, were not able to get a placement have also prepared. But what will set you apart is, uh, as Sir mentioned, there are various cutting edge technologies, right? Like uh, we have AI, ML, blockchain. So you don't have to be an expert in it or you don't have to make high end projects in it, but you should have a knowledge about it. What are the new developments that are happening in this area? And if possible, make some mini projects on it so that it just shows that you are interested in technology and you are enthusiastic about learning new technology. That's about it. Thank you, Janavi. Now, in this your four years of journey, you are basically learning or reading or going through different different kinds of subjects. Okay. Now, these different kinds of subjects. Now, truly speaking, all those subjects are not required for the placement. Like you will be reading Constitution of India has no role in your placement. So, what I would ask now is that about the what are the different kinds of subjects actually it are required for the campus placement. I would uh, handing over to ACS. Thank you, sir. Uh, during the senior or four year BTEC course, there are uh, many subjects which we need to learn uh, to get the degree certificate and pass our semesters. But not all subjects are directly related to the placements. Though at some point of time they will be needed in our career. But during uh, the campus placements, which subjects should be specifically prepared thoroughly that we need to understand. So my next question is related to it. Which subjects did you focus most for your campus placements? So for campus placement, there are some uh, mandatory subjects. Uh, one procedural or the programming language. Uh, it should be, if it is C, then it would be the best because in our first year, second semester, we have C from uh, scratch. It is taught to us by our faculty members. And uh, one uh, object-oriented programming language, be it Java or Python or C Sharp or C++, anything. And uh, apart from uh, Java, uh, Oops and uh, procedural oriented programming language, as Gambi mentioned in complete coding answer that. Data structure and algorithms is all. Without that, no programming language and no coding examination in the campus uh, placements will uh, be covered up. So, data structure and algorithm is the pillar. So, it will be there. And apart from that, there are some uh, optional subjects as well you can keep if you know that. That is operating system, computer networking, cloud computing, software engineering. And as uh, Pooja Ma'am and uh, uh, Abhiru mentioned a few minutes ago, that a sales engineer knows about the product the best. He should know the product about, uh, about it the best he, should, he, should, he or she should know. Similarly, when uh, you are putting these subjects in your resume, you should know at least uh, the entire part of it. Means you should be able to answer the questions that the interviewer will ask in from any part of the, any corner of the subject, be it uh, from the compulsory or from the optional part as well. And uh, there, is, there are two common questions when, I'm, uh, when we face in an interview, that is first of all, uh, introduce yourself or suddenly the interviewer may ask, uh, what are the things that you know apart from your resume? So uh, I think that those optional subjects, you keep two or three, not more than that, because so that you can get the space to answer this question that those optional subjects that I, I, I told just now, you can tell the interviewer that I know this, but remember that those subjects that you are telling that apart from your CV, you should be confident enough to answer the questions that the interviewer will ask you. That's all. Thank you, Nirdi, for uh, highlighting all the subjects which we need to focus, particularly for the campus placements. So you now come to know that the subjects you will be learning or you, those who are basically very important for your campus placements. So again, I am repeating that because some are telling that, sir, I am coming from a Bengali medium, I am coming from a Hindi medium. Don't worry. So grow yourself. So whether you are coming from a Bengali medium or English medium or Hindi medium schools, so if you acquire the knowledge, skill, and if you have, you, the talent you are having, 
So go and crack it. Okay? So are you confident? Yes. Great. So uh, as a part of the this uh, our celebration, I would now request to PM sir to take over. Thank you, sir. All of you are currently running with the influences of different companies. CTS, Wipro, TCS, uh, Capgemini. What is your uh, feeling about the internship or how you are enjoying your internship and how uh, it will help you to uh, bring, uh, build your career or your professional knowledge, your advanced uh, professional knowledge? So, at first, uh, what internship provides us is the exposure to the real world project. In college, we don't get much exposure to them, but in the company, you get uh, to know about the real world project. First and foremost, then whatever you have studied in the four years, be it software engineering or the programming language, you will be get to apply that. We have all, uh, I think, if uh, third year students are present here, they have heard about the subject for software engineering, and there are very software models like waterfall model, V model, agile sprints, and all. Now, these are, you are going to apply this in your internship. You go to the internship, you have to do a few mandatory courses and after that they will provide you the project and you have to do it. And the project will be in that either the spiral model or they will follow the agile method or anything like that. So first and foremost you get to apply the things that you have learned in your college. Second, what you do in the college, you like in the lab, you just run codes. Okay, you don't have to think about the system crash. If you give an error input, the system will crash. But in a real world project, you have to handle that error. The system cannot crash. Either you have to restrict the input properties of the user, or you have to handle it efficiently with the proper message. That, okay, you are giving an error input, the input should be like this. Or you have to restrict that the user cannot give wrong input. So these are the few things that are very essential while you are doing real world projects. Because you have to save the system. If the system gets crashed, then all over the world who are accessing it, will be unable to access it and it will be a huge loss to the company. So yes, internship will taught you this. And another thing that internship will taught you that how to connect with your colleagues, how to escalate an issue, how to like how to communicate with the others in the uh, in the like in your panel. Like you cannot just go on and say hey how are you and done that. In an, you have to send formal messages and you have to do it formally and you have to keep record of everything. Like whatever we do in that we have to write down in the lab copy. Like that, you also have to do the documentation of each and everything that you do. So these are the few things that uh, help us in the internship. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Abhidu. Thank you very much. So another new term has come to you, that is the internship. OK, that is also very important in your career building. And now, Again, as a uh, last time also, I was opening the session for the Q and A. So, anything is coming up in your mind now? You can ask. Nothing. Everything is what is crisp and clear. Again, Songrithi is prompting. Everything is crisp and clear. So you are not telling yes. Everything crisp and clear? Yes. Then I will take an examination after this. I will take a test. Oh, well, let's immediately as I told, I will take a test immediately question is coming. This is not fair. I have a question to all of you. Like how did you prepare well with your communication skills? Because that is important I guess. when when you are facing the interview or when you are interacting with HR. So how did you prepare? Uh, so the main thing for becoming a good communicator or having good communication skills, uh, it's mainly three aspects. The first aspect is having a good grasp on the language itself, which is English in this case. For that, uh, what I call uh, the two methods of this are training the eyes and training the hands. Training the eyes is um, watching as many um, things you can see where English language uh, is being spoken. So you can have a visual reference for everything. That is uh, reading, uh, if you can read books, 
you can read um, online articles, you can uh, read um, anything else which you can get your hands on where the language with written is not very conversational or very informal because those two aspects of language won't help you in becoming good communicator. The one which will help you is usually you can find in uh, any books or any uh, of online articles you can read and then the special part of training your hand is writing everything you have learned down not only writing down but also writing uh, you can start with just simple writing essays and you can move on to writing articles yourself because that way everything you write down stays in your memory and stays in your mind as a very fine imprint a much more permanent imprint so to say so that's the first aspect the second aspect of becoming a good uh, communicator is actually there is a quote, uh, I have forgotten whom it is by, that to become a good speaker, you first have to be an extraordinary listener. So for that, the key is to train your ears. Training your ears is getting your hands, um, as for training your eyes, getting your hands on as many stuff where English is being spoken. A be it podcast, be it um, any uh, movies you can watch where English uh, is being spoken. And another aspect I would, I would like to highlight is that when speaking a language, when human beings speak a language, everyone doesn't speak in the same rhythm, the same diction, the same tone. And there is a thing called accent. So when, if for example, your interviewer is from a different part of India from where you are, he or she will probably speak in a different accent which you will have difficulty catching on the first few minutes. After the first few minutes pass you will be fine but for the first few minutes you will probably have a little bit of difficulty catching on to exactly what he or she is saying. So uh, in order to stop that from happening or in order to smooth that process I would uh, recommend you watch um, films, international films uh, where English is spoken by people who do not speak the way we speak English, which is the typical Indian accent. So if you train your ears like that to catch on to how they speak English without subtitles, if you can, that's the best way. You will also train your mind to do active listening, which is basically the most important part of becoming a good conversationalist. And the last thing, the obvious thing is practicing speaking yourself. So you can speak in front of a mirror. You can choose anyone you are comfortable with and speak English, uh, anything in English with them for as long as you uh, find it necessary. This will ultimately better your communication skills and you will see the difference yourself in a given amount of time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But so much you want to oh, you want to add. Sorry, 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 uh, I want to add one more thing like uh, in short as man asked that how can you improve your communication skill as Swam Arjo mentioned they, these are all, also the views but uh, uh, you can also improve your communication skill by uh, involving in uh, like uh, some events, some workshops or some uh, extracurricular activities like you can participate in different colleges all over India uh, that will also like basically uh, help you to uh, improve your communication skill and uh, basically it will help you uh, uh, like uh, uh, practicing like your communication skills and all and uh, you can also like uh, uh, a part of you can also if you are a part of any uh, organizing anything you are uh, the host then that will also help you in uh, improving your, improving your communication skills so this 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 is the thing i, I also want to add thank you thank you so much and so much but so much you you are talking about the subtitle. So whenever I see the subtitle, I, I cannot follow a movie using a subtitle. Because I always confuse whether to watch the movie or read the subtitle. So that's a perpetual concern for everyone. You will either read the subtitle or you see what's happening. Watching both is extremely difficult. Extremely difficult. So that's why I always wait for the South Indian movies to come on a Hindi dubbing and then <laughs> So you are, uh, uh, thank you madam, so uh, madam, uh, Ishani madam is there, a big hand for Ishani madam. So she has basically saved you from the end of the session test, because I was about to take the test, because you are telling that if no question, no question, so she saved you from the test. But some more things is coming up. So if you are telling again, no question, then test. So no question means test.
एग्रीमेंट सो यू आर सप्लाइंग क्वेश्चन टू द स्टूडेंट फॉर द स्टूडेंट सो यू आर सेविंग दर टेस्ट इन टेलीग्राम आई कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट ही इज टेलिंग टेलीग्राम आई कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड एनीवे सो let us uh, go forward in our this celebration process uh, do you go, are really want some kind of tips and tricks or advice from your seniors these are there all your seniors the staff are all your seniors do you want to hear some kind of tips and tricks or advice from your seniors yes sir okay so uh, what i would uh, request you uh, all of you so you please advise your juniors that how to go ahead in their career so first i would like to start by saying that whatever all of us have said up till this point and what we will say moving forward in one form or the other all our advices our collective goal is to let you know what we did right and more importantly what we did wrong so that you don't repeat our mistakes so as sarfar has said highlighted previously that uh, the entire campusing season as we like to call it kick starts with creating your first cv for the first company you apply now since it's just before the entire thing starts you might have anxiety as if uh, oh it's starting it's starting it's starting what will i do how will i create my first cv i don't know anything so i will request all of you or even advise all of you to have a knowledge of how to create a cv a little bit beforehand so that uh, you if you have blues or jitters before the whole thing starts that doesn't affect the creation of your cv now in the cv itself as sarfraz highlighted previously the best way is to keep it short not include everything which is important because uh, the cv is kind of your first impression not in person but still if not in person it's kind of your first impression to any company you send your cv to and the first impression as they say is always the last impression and also keeping it short and sweet it might sound curt but it i'll actually enhances your chances of being read no one likes to read something extremely long so the shorter you keep your cv the more your your chances of act of it actually being read with interest and not someone losing interest of mid uh, you know in between reading your cv the uh, second point i would like to highlight is that since we all come from an it background and since we are applying to it companies we all focus very much on our coding skills on reading or on technical subjects what we forget is that for most of the companies the first round which we have to clear is aptitude round where your cognitive skills is being tested cognitive skill uh, include uh, quantitative reasoning uh, it uh, include logical reasoning abstract reasoning your uh, grammatical abilities sometimes and sometimes as a first year this said even your communication skills in the form of writing as well in some companies so i would like to advise you to not forget that that exists don't only focus on becoming a great coder and um, having all the technical know how because if you don't pass the aptitude round you won't get to showcase those skills so in order to pass the aptitude round you have to prepare yourself in that way as well would anyone like to add something apart from what shoma just said about cv and aptitude and coding one thing you should always remember that when you are in an interview please keep your answers short like don't speak too much if the interview asks a uh, you have a question just Answer it in one or two lines, not more than that. Keep it short. And whenever an interview comes in the panel, or you go to an interview, like I think the offline interviews will start from the from this year onwards. So if the interview just greets you, good morning, then or good afternoon, or anything else, like after greeting the interviewer, just ask how are you. They like to hear that. That if you are asking that how are they, like uh, right uh, at that moment. Okay. So please do greet your interviewer and ask how are they, and please don't be nervous. Okay, and the last point, like expect very like different kinds of unexpected questions. Like, uh, it will not happen that every time they ask you any everything from your CV or your subjects. Like, uh, it it happened with me. They just gone through my scripts, whatever whatever I have written on the, my CV, and gave me a like the company have a real life a project. Okay, they have a live project and they are facing some issues with it. So they just they just directly threw it to me and said and said me how will you solve it. and at that time i have uh, like what pujam have said 
I use my creative thinking to solve that problem. Like if I use that, okay, go to Java or use the database or that, they would have been directly rejected me. But my answer was so good that they have immediately selected me. So I was all, uh, so I'm telling everyone just to think out of the box. Everything cannot be solved just using Python or Java or database. You may have heard about the term API. Think about it. Okay, like through this main, you can solve a numerous number of issues. Okay, is there anyone uh, want to add something? So thank you, Virupen, so much. Every hand for them. So as Ovidu told that your answer should be short and crispy. Okay. So you mean that, no? Crispy. Okay. So because it's time, I just now I have heard from uh, from Vitri. So now I would request uh, AC Sir to carry on the celebration. Thank you, sir. One most common question asked in the interview is, what are your hobbies? So my question is, can creative hobbies add value during the interview process? What are your recommendations? What to say, what not to say? Uh, I would say that hobbies do add values to your CV because uh, uh, like a uh, few of my hobbies are like photography, uh, graphic designing and uh, event management. So basically if, uh, basically you have to add those hobbies that you think that can be uh, implemented in future also. Uh, hobbies like listening to music that doesn't add any value to your CV, like uh, uh, it does, doesn't conclude anything. So I will recommend to add those hobbies uh, like uh, uh, event management that uh, the panelists will understand that this guy has a good management skill, uh, uh, he can manage things well. So and also one more thing, uh, sometimes interviewer asks about your hobbies too in the interview. Few of my friends uh, have added like reading books. So interviewer may ask that uh, uh, name few of the books that you have read. Uh, uh, like if you are writing photography, then he may ask like uh, any question uh, regarding that uh, thing. He, uh, few, of my, uh, few of my friends have faced this question like regarding hobbies also. So interviewer may ask any question regarding the hobbies too. Uh, and also uh, I would say that uh, uh, basically add those uh, things that can be of use, uh, of, uh, use in future also. Like uh, that can be implemented in the future also. So add those kind of hobbies. Thank you. Thank you, Sakura, for your very smart answer. So as Sakura uh, told that when you are uh, writing that reading books, so the interviewer may ask you that what books you have read for last. So uh, one thing is that do not uh, try to be smart and you, if you think that you can make the interviewer fool, then you are the fullest. Okay, so that is the thing I will just thought to add what Sartra to. Now coming to this, uh, for the last two years we had this COVID pandemic and all these things and in addition to that you people are having the placement preparation because this COVID means there is an external uh, kind of health pressure, mental pressure, what will happen to me, what will happen to my family and blah blah. But with that managing that pressure kind of a thing, you have to uh, add, uh, make yourself ready for the uh, forthcoming campus placement. So how you have managed that? So as I mentioned, uh, and we all know that from the last two years we are uh, in an abnormal situation. And uh, suddenly uh, in 2020 March, uh, when we were facing off, uh, offline classes, when we were doing offline classes, face-to-face -face interactions, Suddenly, a thing come for lockdown announced, and everything got changed. And our face-to-face -face interaction turned into a 15.6 inch laptop screen meeting. And uh, frankly speaking, that before 2020, I did not know anything about Google Meet. Is there a platform? Microsoft Teams? Is there a platform? WebEx? Do they exist? I did not know. But this COVID gave me the knowledge of all these platforms and. Uh, within uh, two to three weeks of the lockdown, our classes uh, shifted to online and uh, for the first two, three months it was very difficult to cope up because uh, there were some doubts that we were not able to clear uh, in online mode. There are some issues in classes like uh, network issues, power cut that uh, Sarfara has mentioned also. 
So these are the issues were there. But at the at some point of time, I think it was a blessing in disguise uh, for us uh, because we got time for preparations as well. Because the traveling time while going to college uh, and the pre period that we used to get in college, uh, we all can utilize those time in uh, while preparing for placements as well. And uh, and one more thing that I'd like to share that is from my personal experience that I I myself got the virus and uh, it affected my family also. And, uh, it really uh, breaks you physically as well as mentally and I lost one month of my preparation during the placements but uh, I, as soon as I recovered I again started uh, the thing but I would like to say that your time management is the key if you can manage the time if you can uh, keep everything aside and focus on your studies because COVID will be there everything will be there but you have to continue with your lifestyle you have to build your career and that should be the highest priority so <laughs> thank you Thank you, David. So in our life, we always uh, move. We always move on. Okay, today I am, we, you are here, tomorrow you will be here, day after you will be here, so that kind of an aspiration and all these things. So I would request SSF to uh, carry on this celebration in that area. In a few months, we are about to embark on a career as an IT professional in some multinational software company. You must have a lot of ambitions and expectations at the start. So where do you want to visualize yourself in the next five years? This is my question. So like, it's very difficult to predict our future. Okay, even I don't know where I will be after five years. But I know something like I love technology. So I am in this field because of technology, because I love technology, I love gadgets. So I continuously go on, like go through blogs and other things in search of it. Okay, so like now currently I am an intern at TCA and I am going to various technologies. Like when I was first joined this college, I was a lamp stack developer. Yeah, I think you all may heard about that, but now it's a dedicated technology. Now what companies use, companies shifted from native application development to hybrid application development. They have just dumped the thing called LAMP stack. They are now going with full stack like mean and merge. Like if you like, so in future, after five years, I want to be a full stack developer where uh, through which I can like pursue my career or I can like uplift my uh, knowledge and can gain, my, uh, gain myself uh, like higher positions in the company. But apart from that, there's a uh, like there's possible that something else come up in the market and that starts dominating the other learning. So I have to learn that. So it's very difficult to predict the future. But at this point, like what I think I will do is to shift myself just from a normal lamp stack developer to a full stack developer in uh, in the in JavaScript better. Thank you. Thank you. So we have, we have used a term called full stack developer. So what do you mean by that? Okay, so full stack developer is a person who can handle both backend or I should say who can develop both backend and frontend at the same time and, and along with that he or, he or she can also test it. Like uh, uh, backend means building the server side code and frontend means building the client side of the code. Okay, so like the po popular frontend technologies you all may know called HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, earlier we used to uh, use jQuery but now it's got deprecated. Uh, and for the like, front-end framework you can also use Bootstrap, that's the most famous framework that we use in, uh, like in company projects and, in, and also in our daily college projects. And apart from that you have to handle the back-end also, like no one will accept just a front-end. What will you do with the front-end? If you go to sales to a just normal back-end, okay I'll make a website for you. And they'll say, okay, uh, if you make a website for me, then you also have to add this communication thing or the add my ad card. I want to sell my things in my bakery through that online portal. So the front front end won't work alone. You also have to develop the back end for it. Like the popular technologies earlier we used to use for back end are PHP, Servlet, and all. But nowadays those are all got deprecated. Nowadays we use Node.js, we use React, we use Angular like to boost up our project and for testing purpose we use uh, like we use selenium nowadays there are more uh, things like jenkins jest jasmine 
we used to we use these things to uh, to test the project. So to be a full stack developer, you have to know the first the front end. You clear you have to create the front end thing. Then you have to create the back end. And most importantly, you have to store the user data. Like like uh, his user want to uh, do some kind of transaction. You have to store that data, right? So for that earlier we used to use MySQL, Oracle SQL, and all. But nowadays it has shifted from MySQL or like normal structured query language to no structured query language. We use MongoDB these days. You may have heard about the term called mean stack, mean stack. What do they mean? Mean stack mean is a like mean stand for M stand for MongoDB, A stand for Angular, R stand for React. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, mean A for Angular, E for ExpressJS, and N for Node.js. Again, in, in case of MERN, it's R stand for React library and both of these things. Mm -hmm. Angular is a framework and React is a library. Don't get confused between those two, these two things. And these two things, Angular and React, are supported by the top two, I should say, the top two uh, companies in the market. Angular is supported by Google and React is supported by Facebook. So, so I should advise you to go through these things nowadays instead of like to like to go on the lamp stack part and all the like old technologies go with go on with the new technologies because in the upcoming days the interviewers will want this kind of skills from you thank you thank you Abhiru. thank you so now i would, I would request uh, pm sir to carry on the celebration thank you thank you very much uh, your four year part uh, campus journey uh, your four year engineering course and the last one and a half year campus journey is very uh, charming as you discussed that it is very you are very energetic uh, how you manage your personal strength stress is a uh, vital thing that it is affect your success uh, it is affect your performance how you deal with your personal stress so, I don't think I need to tell anyone this. Stress is bad. Stress is very bad. Don't take stress. Everyone says that don't take stress. But how not to take stress? In terms of campusing preparations, if you there, there are two times where the stress is the maximum. One, before the, um, if you use it for the rounds, any round, absolutely any round. And another one is before the lists are allowed to come out, whether you have got selected or you are rejected. Now, you might think the second time the stress is fine, it won't affect anything, but that's not the case. It will affect, but uh, it will affect the uh, your campusing preparations for the next company you are about to sit in. So, if you dwell on uh, that stress, if you keep on taking stress for each and every company you sit in and for each and every exam of each and every company you sit in, then your entire uh, campusing season will be on, you will be under an unimaginable amount of pressure and it's obviously not good for your performance in any way at all. And since campusing season goes on for an entire year, sometimes even more than an entire year, so it's not like one exam. Exams maximum, um, maximum duration of an exam is one and a half month. So if uh, so, up until campusing preparations, the maximum time you are under stress is one month, one and a half month. But if you take that and this and equate the two and think, that, okay, I will be under this performance pressure for entire one year, unwittingly, no one uh, takes stress wittingly. But even unwittingly, if you fall into that trap, it's very bad. And another thing I would like to highlight, obviously, the best thing that comes out of a campusing season is getting placed, is getting selected, and the worst thing is getting rejected. One of my favorite poems is If by Rudyard Kipling. I don't know if you have read it, some of you might have read it. There is one beautiful line in there which refers to um, success and failure as imposters, and the, or, and the um, writer or the author tells you to treat both the same. It's extremely difficult to treat both um, success and failure the same way. But trust me, if you can do it, there's nothing that will be able to stop you in anything, let alone campus uh, placements. So if you if you fail, if you don't get placed in one company, if one company rejects you, it's fine to feel sad, but don't let it affect your preparation for the next one because there are all there will always be a next one. Even if you think, okay, this is the last company, 
you will go on and discover after few days okay no there are more companies i can say so don't think in absolutely any company even if it's the last company on campus don't think this is the end of the world i can't do anything more everything is over and on the other hand if you are successful if you get placed somewhere go on and celebrate it maybe um, let's stay at home and netflix and chill or if you are an outdoors kind of guy go off and celebrate for one day or one evening but not more than that because there are other companies where you have to sit as well you might want to sit as well so in that case uh, all i can say is don't dwell on either success or failure keep it as it is treat it as an imposter and move on nothing will be able to stop you thank you thank you so much sir. but pm sir you have asked for this uh, stress and personal stress have you included patient personal stress <laughs> yes i am asking no no i was asking have you included that by personal stress you mean that kind of special personal stress also no okay. so i i have not come to know from the star that how to handle special personal stress i will not advise they will advise now we are almost at the fag end of the celebration so uh, i would like to hear from you that what uh, the thing in uh, pm you like most there are many things but uh, i can't list them all right now so one of the best thing which i want to tell you is the faculty members the professors they are very good they are very helpful they are very friendly you can contact them any time one round of a big hand for the faculty members as well as uh, there are newspapers as well there is a section also so it's a very peaceful place uh, to uh, spend your time and uh, before internals also when you don't have preparation uh, so you can do that in that the library is okay apart from all these studies and everything about library and all what i like most about pm is the extracurricular activities like he mentioned ex exploring the club he mentioned estella and apart from that we have a club uh, we have that cultural club called colorado too and even a sport a sport club so they arrange fest throughout the year even in your in the off season you get a semester and even the evening semester you get a uh, fest so i like the i like fest the most okay i like i used to come every fest i used to roam around i even i participate in yantra and phoenix and uh, apart from the fest something uh, i would like to mention that in our college the lab assistants are very helpful especially our new specialist the lab assistants we are for the lab assistants you can also see the other students here in comments there was there even in the pandemic situation like after college hours they used to help us like we cannot reach to the teachers all the time because they have to take class So we used to reach the lab teachers and we have to ask for help regarding our course and all, and they used to mail it to us or sometimes WhatsApp, WhatsApp us. So, uh, so our lab assistants are very helpful for us. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Abhiru. Uh, now, uh, in online Jamana, do we really need a library or only Telegram will solve it?
selling online YouTube is there. Okay, YouTube is there. And Mr. Sundar Pichai is always available. <laughs> because everything that comes in Telegram is not actually the correct one. Not the correct one. I will supply you the correct one, please. <laughs> uh, YouTube is a free source and uh, there are some uh, there are at, at websites also. Before this is there, uh, Mr. Academy is there. There are a beautiful application where one can study the subjects of business as well as international subjects. So these online platforms will help you a lot, but Telegram. I am no, joking. Please <laughs> don't forget to share. Hi, please. Like you have said, wait first. You mentioned about the library. Okay, so in the pandemic situation, our library also put a great effort to upload the digital copy of all the books of our semester. We have for the library. And they did it in perfect decor. They also uploaded all the past question papers they have. They came to college, scan all of them and put it in the Google Drive and send it to us so that we can uh, study and along with that we can like get to know what kind of questions to come. Because uh, like you all know you are very fond of organizers I think, but you won't get that at that time. You have to build your own organizer. So so they used to pass us the questions and we used to solve them. Thank you. No, we do this first year. Uh, it's not, uh, I think, aware about the term organizer. Yes, they will. They are first year today. One thing that uh, Omidu mentioned is that the uh, library helped us uh, by uploading the question papers and it was very important because uh, suddenly during our online mode our semester examination pattern changed from a broad question to a relatively 50, uh, 50 questions of MCQs. So these last 10 to 12 years MCQs uh, were the bonus thing that we had to solve and practice for uh, our upcoming semester exam. So it helped a lot in this. Great, great. Now, do you want to add something? Uh, now, if, if we give you a chance that you have the chance to change one thing in PM, what do you want to change? Standing. <laughs> I am a little bit short of hearing. Sir, so basically I am a sports person. I used to play basketball, but when I came to college, I saw that basketball court, but that is also too small and that is also not for us, that is also for school children. Whenever I used to go there, the children used to tell me, no, no, Didi, you are not allowed here, you are not allowed here. <laughs> so I want a good basketball court in a college for college students only. Okay, what about this? Uh, say, you see, in our classroom. <laughs> Good man. Uh, another thing that we mentioned about basketball, and uh, I would like to because I play and love cricket, so I like to uh, tell that there should be a playground where the ball doesn't go out or goes to the canteen and we get extra steady free of course. So <laughs> I think that if you are if I think there is a sufficient amount of playground to play all kinds of sports, then we do. Okay. So you do not want to change anything. <laughs> Uh, we can have a better lab. Like what the lab. labs we have, we can also have a better lab than that. Uh, lab than that. We can have like uh, where we can do the study or the research work for like artificial intelligence and machine learning and all. Like if we have a, that kind of lab, then we can build, uh, like the students of uh, FIM can build more innovative projects. They can research in that. So I think that would be a better thing if we have a special dedicated lab for that. Good input. So much. So one thing I would like to change is I would like to have better equipment, both sound equipment and visual equipment, projector and everything in the auditorium because whenever we have any events over there, club events or otherwise, there is a huge technical issue every time and it delays the event by sometimes even more than an hour. It stops in the middle, it stops in the middle of the event, we have to delay the event from the middle for about an hour. So that is one thing I would like. So basically infrastructure. Infrastructure. Okay. So Sarfraj. Sir, uh, I would mention like a big playground, like I love to play cricket, uh, so uh, as Abhirup mentioned like a, a, play, a dedicated playground for playing cricket, or uh, uh, all the things they have mentioned already. So thank you, thank you all of you. So we are at the fag end of the uh, celebration. Now I will hand it over to Ishani Madam.
So do you have any question in your mind? Then I will ask SSI a little bit later. Otherwise, every time the teachers are saving you from test. Any question? No question. Then SSI, please don't save them. Let, let me take a test. Okay, SSI. Sir, I was going through the registration data and I found, I don't know how many, but few of the students are from the circuit branches, means EC. And uh, we've been talking about the IT companies, the papers that are needed, the projects that are needed to prep those companies, the preparation, the methods, the whole thought process is centric to IT. But we see a lot of the students from the PC branch, for example, they get also placed in the same arena. So, as a teacher, from the perspective of the students, I may ask you, how should they look at the IT specific subjects and the preparation methods in the coming days? Anyone want to add? Hey, Mike. So for basic uh, the circuit branch students, uh, they have no option because they have to uh, do the basics of OOPS, possibly uh, only programming language and database management system as well. But they should know their uh, core subjects as well because we don't know when we are appearing for an interview, the interviewer is from IT background or EC background. If he is from EC background and if he sees that he is, he is an EC student or a core, core branch student, then he or she can throw a uh, core subject question to you. And if he, he or she is not a, a able to answer, then he can directly ask that, have you not read in your semester? So it's, a, it's very difficult to face that question. So I think apart from that IT subject also, uh, one uh, from those who are from the core branch, they should know the basics of these IT subjects as well, but they should keep their core subjects as to the strengths. Uh, sir, I would say that uh, uh, there is uh, no much difference because uh, they can apply for the core companies also there uh, for their core subjects and also there are few subjects that are common like uh, I guess OOPS is also there in uh, easy uh, I guess six, six semester they have to study as an optional uh, elective subject and also there is uh, a common subject as C so there is nothing like that they can't apply for any IT uh, company. So they can apply, they can also apply for the IT job role and they can uh, obviously they, if they are good in uh, IT related subjects they can like uh, crack the interview. Thank you. Yeah, one more thing that uh, since we all are doing something internship in our uh, company, there are some domains called VRSI, Automation, AutoCAD. So there is demand for those core branch students also because I think for EC, whenever I face an EC student, they say that their dream is to work in VSI. So there are there are domains because companies are looking for students to work on those domains also. They have those projects also. So those EC students do not feel that we are kept apart or we are kept alone. So you can also take part in our IT companies and uh, achieve your dreams. Thank you. Any other, any further question? So I'd like to tell the that uh, the headline of today's uh, is IT is your career. Okay. So it is, yes, it is as I told you at the beginning. Yes, it is the IT which is basically the career. You have to come to IT. Okay. Any other, any, any further questions from the house? House is open for Q&A. No, then I am <coughs> handing over to Ishani, madam. I think CM sir would like to add something. May I audible? May I audible? Yes, sir. What is the color of my shirt? <laughs> now you are able to see my star? Yes, sir. Want to be my star? I am not hearing. Thank you. That was indeed a very informative and interactive session. 
and I'm sure it will definitely help all the students who have joined with us today. Now, I would request Professor Tapos Roy to present an appreciation certificate to Ms. Janvi Oja. Professor Anirban Chakraborty is being requested to present the appreciation certificate to Mr. Ovirup Ghosh. And Mr. Deep Deep Sharkar. I would request Professor Prashindit Mukherjee to present appreciation certificate to Mr. Shoma Jushamundo. Mr. Sarparaz Ahmed. Thank you all for attending today's session. We are looking forward for an excited session tomorrow as well. See you tomorrow from 1 p.m. onward, but uh, not good night. Okay, that will be told by that. Thank you. So uh, today's celebration is over. To end the celebration, may I request the volunteers to switch off the lights and you put the mobile lights on and to celebrate the moment. All of you. So this is the way we are basically here we are having the future start, here we are having the present start. So big hand up for the future and the present. Thank you. So we will have a session tomorrow. Wish you all a very good night. Good night.